our future, our needing and our nurture, lie here before our eyes. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. The young and the old, frightened and the bold, the goodness and the least. We come to your feast, we come to your feast, with fruit of our land, the work of our hands, we come to your feast. We place upon your royal love. A humble loaf of bread, the gifts of fear the hillside, the grain by which we fed. We come to taste your presence of Him on whom we feed, the strength and can connect us to. Challenge and correct us to love in the need. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. The young and the old, the frightened, the bold, the greatest and the least. We come to your feast, we come to your feast, the fruit of our lands, the work of our hands, come to your feast. A simple cup of wine, the fruit of hunger, labor, the gift of blood and wine. We come to taste your presence. to your feast, the fruit 
fruit of our land, the work of our hands, we come to your feet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A very good evening, everyone. You might have noticed I was walking around talking to the servers. It's a bit warm in here this evening. I said, if you feel faint, go into the sacristy where there is uh, water available. And that that's goes for yourselves as well. Just go in the sacristy. There's plenty of water in there in the tap. We've paid our bill. So we ask the Lord to be with us this evening. Today is the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And great things have happened in the past 24 hours in our parish. Yesterday, I celebrated in our parish a, a wedding and a marriage between Felicity and um, uh, Huey. And so they've gone off now to their honeymoon. And so we had a great time yesterday. And today, we've welcomed into our parish hall our confirmation candidates. They've been walking with Andrew and his family as they have been preparing and listening about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and all the important journey that they have begun to prepare for confirmation in September. So we give thanks to the, sacri uh, so to the catechist work today and uh, we had plenty of young people. We, we had about 22, 23 children wanting to be confirmed this year. So it's a great blessing upon our parish. Would you like to be seated for a moment? Thank you. We have um, some St. Stephen's medals. You know that after a year of serving, our young people receive a, a medal, and the medal is a bronze medal. Um, young Amelia, she's on holiday this week, but next week I'll be presenting young Amelia um, with her silver medal for long service. But these young people who are receiving it today, they've done a whole year and they've trained well and they've served well. So this is their reward from the Guild of St. Stephen, from Bishop Patrick, to say thank you for um, serving for the past year and hopefully for many years to come. So we've got the medal, St. Stephen's medals, here on, on our cushion. And on the medal itself, the bronze medal, it says St. Stephen, um, and of course it says uh, to reign and serve for Christ on the back. So we've got St. Stephen and, the, and the, um, the saint who was one of our first saints, and also, of course, to reign and serve Christ. So, dear Lord, we ask you to come upon these medals. May the young people who receive them this evening, recognised by their efforts, their service, their loyalty, and their good manners, that they are being rewarded by the Bishop of Nottingham and the Guild for a job well done. And may Almighty God bless them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, first of all, if... Um, Gemma, would you like to come forward first of all? And uh, do you want to stand in the middle here facing me? Okay. okay you just stay there for a moment. And uh, Mariana, where's Mariana? Okay. Congratulations. And who else we've got? Oh, yep, Sophie, how could I forget? Sophie, come forward. Okay. So I just want to come round this way to face everyone. You've got to make a few promises for me. Okay. So dear young people, repeat after me. I offer myself to Almighty God. I offer myself to Almighty God. To Blessed Mary, our Mother, to Blessed Mary, our Mother. You have to say it with a bit more passion. <laughs> to our holy patron, Saint Stephen. To our holy patron, Saint Stephen. And I promise to do my best. I promise to do my best. To serve regularly. To serve regularly. And with reverence. And with reverence. To the glory of God. 
to the service of his church and my own eternal salvation and my own eternal salvation. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your prayers are on there. Let's give our ladies a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. There is no pay rise. Okay. So let us stand. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory to God in the height of the heavens. Peace to God's people, God's people on earth. Glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Son of the Father, all glory and worship, praise and thanksgiving to you, Lamb of God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, receive our prayer. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Seated in power at the right of the Father, Jesus alone is the Lord the Most High. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. And with the spirit of love everlasting, reigning in glory forever. Amen. Glory, glory, glory to God. Okay. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those set firm on the foundation of your love. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We now listen to the word of God. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, 
I hear so many disparaging me. Tenor, terror from every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All those who used to be my friends watched for my downfall. Perhaps he will be seduced into error. Then we will master him and take our revenge. But the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. My opponents will stumble, mastered, confounded by their failure. Everlasting, unforgettable disgrace will be theirs. But you, Lord of hosts, you who probe with justice, who scrutinize the loins and heart, let me see the vengeance you will take on them, for I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, in your great love, answer me, O God. In your great love, answer me, O God. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame covers my face, that I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my own mother's sons. I burn with seal for your house, and taunts against you fall on me. In your great love, answer me, O God. This is my prayer to you, my prayer for your favour. In your great love, answer me, O God, with your help that never fails. Love, Lord, answer, for your love is kind. In your compassion, turn towards me. In your great love, answer me, O God. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God-seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy, and does not spurn his servants in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the sea and all its living creatures. In your great love, answer me, O God. Now the second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Sin entered the world through one man, and through sin, death. And thus death has spread through the whole human race because everyone has sinned. Sin existed in the world long before the law was given. There was no law, and so no one could be accused of the sin of law-breaking. Yet death reigned over all from Adam to Moses, even though their sin, unlike that of Adam, was not a matter of breaking a law. Adam prefigured the one to come, but the gift itself considerably outweighed the fall. If it is certain that through one man's fall so many died, it is even more certain that divine grace, coming through one man, Jesus Christ, came to so many as an abundant free gift. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 The word was made flesh and lived among us. To all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows Do not be afraid. For everything that is now covered will be uncovered, and everything now hidden will be made clear. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the daylight. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Fear him rather, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Can you not buy two sparrows for a penny, and yet not one falls to the ground without the Father knowing? Why, every hair on your head has been counted, so there is no need to be afraid. 
you are worth more than a hundred sparrows. So if anyone declares himself for me in the presence of men, I will declare myself for him in the presence of my Father in heaven. But the one who disowns me in the presence of men, I will disown in the presence of my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. A very good evening, everyone. All those sparrows, at the end of today's gospel, all I could think of was Jack Sparrow. I don't know why. Sorry about that. I'll move on quickly. Jack Sparrow is a pirate, if you don't know who Jack Sparrow is. I have a... For many years now, I've read the... I think I've read the book about, about a dozen times overall over the years... There is a book called The Diary of a Country Priest. And this book is from the 1930s. It was um, uh, written in the 1930s, uh, and it's about a French priest. It was written originally in French. In 1951, they made a movie of it as well, an old black and white movie in 1951 called The Diary of a Country Priest. But, of course, it was all in French. You have to watch it in subtitles if you want to either, um, and, of course, or the English translation if you don't know French. The Diary of a Country Priest is what it says. Uh, A young priest goes to a French town, and it's set in in autumn, winter time. It's quite a, the book uh, um, especially, it's set in a quite a dark period of history, and it's set... Uh, and the man, the priest, the young priest who's been sent to this village, who are not a very enthusiastic lot, he also isn't well. He keeps um, hemorrhaging blood, and he doesn't know why. So he is sent to this, uh, this town, and all that uh, the, 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 in the movie and in the book, all that people ever do is moan at him, moan about their lives, moan about how he's not a very good priest, moan about the lord of the manor, the count that uh, runs the, the local area. The priest goes from pillar to post trying to make everybody happy, trying to help them turn their lives around, try and see the positives out of the negative sometimes. And the drudge of this young priest's life, his health's not great, uh, the people are not very enthusiastic, the, the count um, doesn't really want to talk to him. So he feels very alienated, very uh, negative, and he's suffering a lot. But he can't keep food down. He can't keep food down. He keeps vomiting as well. He can't keep food down. And so he goes to Lille, to the, to the, to the doctor, to see what's wrong. And so in the middle of the movie and in the middle of the book, he is told he has stomach cancer and there is no hope for him. Just, the doctor says, if you eat a little bit of bread and maybe dip it in wine, red wine, and just eat that, but I can't really help you, but that might be able to soothe your stomach stomach a little bit. So the man carried on his life. He would celebrate Mass in the morning and nobody nobody would turn up except the altar boy or altar girl. They wouldn't turn up, and so he had a a lonely existence. But he still tried to see the positive in it. But then it gets worse for him. If if my homily's not been so depressing so far, it gets even worse. They start to see that he's not not attending um, parties, and he's not attending meals and festivals. He's not eating with them. And lots of people have noticed that all he does is drink red wine all the time. And so now they label him as an alcoholic priest. And here's this young poor priest. He's only drinking wine to soothe his stomach, which has cancer. And so by the end of the book, I assure you, you feel really depressed. But then, of course, what happens at the end of the book is that the people discover what the problem is. They discover that the priest isn't very well. They discover that he has a good heart and he's trying to serve them his best. 
And he's been doing all of this while in the middle of trying to um, survive cancer. And so his witness of not complaining, not um, shouting it from the rooftops and letting people know his business, and trying to just serve the best he could, it helped the people realize that they should really think before they act. They should find out what makes, makes somebody tick and, and how important it is to know people. So the moral of the whole book is that even I, because you don't find out about the priest and his stomach cancer until about 100, page 196 of 200, and so even I was starting to feel the book is designed to help you feel negative towards the priest. I was annoyed with him. The people in the book were annoyed with him. I just, I wanted to write to his bishop. But then, of course, he dies. And he doesn't just die, but on his deathbed, his last words are placed at the end of the book. There is grace even in the brokenness of the world. Roughly translated out of the French, there is grace. God's grace is in the, in the center of what we all do. Even if it's good, bad, struggles, happiness, successes, failures, God's grace is in the center of all of this. And here, is, here am I as a priest, he was thinking, trying to show you that, hold on, God's grace is in the middle of, of the mess you are in, in the situation you find yourself. In today's gospel, Jesus invites his disciples who will also discover struggles in their ministry, struggles in their lives. They will be martyred, many of them. But what does Jesus say? He says it three times in today's gospel. Have courage. Have courage in the middle of what I have placed you, where I'm sending you, what you will meet, how you will be challenged. Have courage. Know that God's grace is in the center of whatever's happening in your life. And I think that's what we need to hold on to this coming week. Have courage. Have faith. Trust in the Lord. Recognize his grace in our lives. We can see our lives as just a gray, depressing drudge. We can just count the days to our next holiday. But when we do that, of course, we fail to enjoy every day of our lives and to embrace every moment, how, whether it's good or bad. Because if you fail to embrace every moment of your life, you're failing to embrace God's grace. For sometimes out of the scars we've received, sometimes out of the challenges we've faced, we have become better people. Let us not turn away from challenges, but let us embrace knowing that God will be with us through all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. You are worth more than a hundred sparrows. Let us stand. Shall we say the Nicene Creed together? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Sisters and brothers, Jesus reassured the apostles not to be afraid. And we pray that the same gift for all who are persecuted in their Christian faith, we may find courage in our everyday lives. May Pope Francis experience continuing improvement of his health and proclaim the goodness of God's protection for all who suffer from war, violence, and persecution. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May all who experience fear in their lives come to trust in God, know that he is at their side, and commit their cause to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May Christians who are experiencing persecution for their faith in so many countries be held by us in prayer this day as they receive this divine grace as a free gift through Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May every effort be made through diplomacy to end the war in Ukraine as well as in Sudan, Syria, and everywhere around the world where people are traumatized by violence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the men who died and their families in the Ocean Gate submersible this week, and all those who may have lost their lives at sea. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. During this weekend, we have celebrated Armed Forces Day remembering our women and men that serve and have served our armed forces serving across the world in service of peace and security. We also remember those who gave their lives serving their country. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask Our Lady of Walsingham to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most woman. And, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners us now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Father, be with us this coming week. We especially ask you to be with our young people who are our confirmation candidates, that you will walk with them and their catechists on this journey of faith. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to be seated as we prepare our altar today. Shall we sing um, hymn number 619 together?
Jesus, come again. Come, Lord Jesus, come again. Light of the world, Son of God, come, Lord Jesus, come again. Come, Lord Jesus, come again. Jesus Christ, Son of God, come, Lord Jesus, come again. Come, Lord Jesus, come again. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of consolation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its actions, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We keep yourselves and all of our families in our prayers, those on, in, on earth and in heaven. Our Mass intention this evening, uh, Phil Edes would like to remember the welfare of Kath Dyson, um, Kath has uh, been in hospital with a broken leg and now she's in recovery um, in Ilkeston. So we ask the Lord to be with uh, Kath on this day in her recovery. We also uh, pray for Mariana, uh, Gemma and Sophie um, as they have received their St. Stephen's medals this evening. We ask the Lord to be with them in their journey. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with the angels we praise you, and in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy Lord, Heaven and earth, heaven and earth are full of your glory, your power and might. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, blessed is he who comes. Blessed, blessed is he who comes. Blessed is he, blessed is he, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. 
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. If you'd like to be seated or kneel, Eucharistic prayer two. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us <clears throat> the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Patrick our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Shall we either bow to each other or shake each other's hands and say, Peace be with you. Peace be with you, ladies. Peace with you. Okay. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. Congratulations. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. In a moment, uh, myself and Andy will distribute Holy Communion. Before we do that, shall we send a spiritual blessing to those who are watching online? Dear Lord, we ask you to be with our sick, our housebound, and all of our parishioners watching online today, and those from around the world who watch us regularly. We ask you, Lord, to come upon us, to help us have courage, and also to know that God's grace is at the centre of our lives. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're a visitor to our church today, you're most welcome. Just wait in your pew and you'll be guided forward by our welcomers. We also have gluten free. And also, if you need a blessing, I'd be honoured to give you a blessing. Thank you.
just uh, one or two notices. You have an envelope um, with your bulletin. It's for Peter's Pence. And there's an explanation on the back of your bulletin explaining and reminding you what Peter Pence does. It's, it's the work of the Holy Father. So um, that will uh, be collected next week. So uh, please uh, bring your envelope or uh, your £50 notes uh, next week for the Holy Father. Um, also, um, just to say that the Mass times are changing tomorrow morning just for one week only. So don't panic. It's just for one week so that Hassop can have a shared lunch together. So, I, of course, I'll be there just so that I can have any spare food that's going, uh, as, as all priests do. This coming Thursday is a solemnity. It's uh, the great feast of St. Peter and St. Paul. So we have a Mass both at Matlock and at Hassop, and uh, the school is not going to have a Mass in the afternoon. They're going to come and join us in the morning uh, while, while it's cooler. Uh, so the school will be with us um, on Thursday morning as well. We thank, uh, in this heat, our catechists and our young people for confirmation. They look like they had a, a great afternoon together, and I appreciate the parents uh, bringing them and picking them up as well and coming to church as well. Just to, uh, just to say, also there's a feast of uh, Oliver Plunkett. Uh, Oliver Plunkett is a martyr in Ireland and he had his head cut off. And when my mum made her first Holy Communion at the age of seven, as a, um, a spiritual gift to her, her dad, my grandfather, went and took her to Drogheda to show her the head of Oliver Plunkett. What a present to be giving somebody on their first Holy Communion. She was traumatised forever. Let us stand and pray. There is a Simply Supper this evening. A bread and roll and uh, sandwiches and things to eat, cake and fruit. So that's available in our hall if you have time to stay with us afterwards, you're very welcome to break bread in our hall afterwards. Renewed and nourished by the same sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, these, these young people on the altar, they've got something that I've never had. I was never an altar boy. I never received a St. Stephen's medal. So really, they, they are definitely future priests and monks and nuns of our diocese. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. So let's sing 569 as our closing hymn.